So, <clears throat> out of the uh, uh, anarchism or libertarian socialism uh, that uh, Proudhon had developed, uh, there develops uh, two other trends within anarchism. Um, the first is insurrectionary anarchism, and the second is uh, collectivism. And uh, these two, uh, these two uh, strands of thought uh, become somewhat intertwined and, and connected. Uh, so uh, once Proudhon uh, had laid out the framework for anarchism, other socialists adopted his ideas and developed upon them. Now, uh, Proudhon was somewhat of a gradualist and a reformist. Uh, he was actually a member of the French Parliament, and his most important work, The General Idea of the Revolution in the 19th Century, actually contained legislative uh, proposals. So uh, you had this anarchist politician putting forth anarchist legislative proposals for social reform. Uh, uh, so uh, after Proudhon, you had uh, Carlo, Carlo Pisacane, uh, who adopted uh, mutualist anarchism, uh, but he takes it uh, in a little more radical direction uh, or in a much more radical direction, I should say. Uh, he stands more in the tradition of Louis Auguste Blanqui, um, and he, he holds that a uh, violent revolution is necessary. Um, furthermore, he puts forth uh, this idea of uh, propaganda of the deed, uh, the notion that uh, terrorist tactics ought to be used to advance uh, anarchist goals and hasten the coming of the revolution. Uh, this, uh, this leads to the emergence of insurrectionist anarchism and illegalism. Um, other anarchists like Johann Most uh, take up this idea of uh, propaganda of the deed and end up advocating terrorist tactics like bomb throwing and assassinations. Uh, such ideals of violent revolution and terrorism led Emma Goldman and Alexander Berkman uh, to attempt the assassination of Henry Clay Frick, uh, the chairman of Carnegie Steel, after Frick uh, had brought in the Pinkertons to gun down striking workers. Um, more prominent anarchists like uh, Mikhail Bakunin and Peter Kropotkin uh, were opposed to such terrorist tactics and insisted that uh, propaganda of the deed should be interpreted as doing good deeds and helping people. Um, while uh, most anarchist intellectuals are opposed to such violent forms of insurrectionary anarchism and do not advocate violent propaganda of the deed, this still remains as a permanent stain on the reputation of anarchism. Uh, anarchism is actually predominantly a peaceful and nonviolent philosophy, emphasizing the importance of social cooperation, non-domination, and equality over hierarchy. Most anarchists prefer consensus-based decision-making processes and only condone the use of violence as a last resort when it is absolutely necessary for self-defense. Um, collectivist anarchism associated with the ideals of uh, Mikhail Bakunin emerges out of the mutualist movement uh, that had been founded by Proudhon, uh, but it is also heavily influenced by the ideals of Marxism and other uh, socialist movements. Um, so the collectivists advocate the collectivization of the means of production, uh, which they believe will come about as a result of the workers revolting and forcibly taking control, control of the means of production. Unlike Marxism, in the collectivist narrative, the workers take over the factories and workshops, directly seizing the means of production, rather than taking over the state and using government as a tool to assist in the collectivization of the means of production. Uh, once this collectivization takes place, money will be abolished and replaced by labor notes. These labor notes are a form of currency consisting of notes representing a certain number of hours of labor. 
Note here that the collectivists reject Proudhon's mutual banking proposal and his idea of a bank of the people, um, and they reject it in favor of a more simple solution. Um, under this collectivist system of labor note currency, workers' salaries would be democratically de determined based upon the difficulty of the work. Under this system, if a person chooses to work more hours than someone else, that individual will be paid more. Collectivist anarchism, in my estimation, is basically a, a more radical form of mutualism. Uh, then, uh, af out of uh, this uh, collectivism develops communist anarchism. Uh, so, uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph de Jacques was an early anarchist and a critic of Proudhon. Uh, de Jacques coined the term libertarian in reference to anarchists, identifying himself as a libertarian communist. He argued that a person is not necessarily entitled to the product of their labor as much as to the satisfaction of their basic needs. If a person has a physical or mental disability, should that disability deprive them of human rights? Isn't life a basic human right? Does it not therefore follow that the necessities for sustaining life should be provided regardless of contribution as long as society can afford it? According to Zizak, the ideal society would embrace a communistic arrangement of from each according to their ability to each according to their need. Thus, an ideal libertarian society would guarantee the provision of necessities to all of its members. Uh, the surplus value that social labor produces currently goes towards the profits of rentiers, uh, people who own the means uh, of production. Um, and uh, under mutualistic arrangements, the surplus value would simply go to the members of the cooperatives or working men's associations. Uh, a far a far better arrangement in the estimation of communist anarchists would be for the community as a whole to take ownership of the means of production so that the community could use that wealth to take care of the needs of the entire populace. In The Conquest of Bread, Peter Kropotkin, one of the most important theorists of communist anarchism, says the following. If a society, city, or territory were to guarantee the necessities of life to its inhabitants, and we shall see how the conception of the necessities of life can be extended as to include luxuries, it would be compelled to take possession of what is absolutely needed for production. That is to say, land, machinery, factories, means of transport, etc. Capital in the hands of private owners would be expropriated and returned to the community. Um, Kropotkin holds that the problem with capitalism is not only that capitalists seize a large share of the profits of each industrial and commercial enterprise, thus enabling them to live without working, but that all production has taken a wrong direction, as it is not carried on with a view to securing the well-being of all. The purpose of production should not be for profit or enriching oneself by outcompeting others, but rather for the provision of well-being to society. People should not work in order to earn money, but in order to fulfill a social duty. Thus, the economy should be restructured on a cooperative basis rather than a competitive one. There should be a, so they sh there should be a sort of social contract in which the people, according to their ability, agree to work so many hours in fields of labor uh, deemed to be necessary, and the society will, in return, grant well-being to all of its members. The communist anarchists uh, criticized Proudhon's mutualism on the grounds that they could not conceive of a market economy without arbitrary pricing in accordance with supply and demand. This arbitrary pricing, the communist anarchists held, is largely uh, what allows for profits. A product will have a market price that is higher than the cost of production. The amount of the price above cost of production constitutes profit. 
Thus, profit and exploitation and the theft of surplus value through profit are built into the market system as such so that it is theoretically impossible to disassociate markets and profits. Profits lead to inequality and the disparity of wealth, which ultimately leads to a division of society into castes, with one group working for the other. Thus, it would be impossible to create a non-capitalistic market system. In the ABC of Anarchism, the communist anarchist Alexander Berkman makes the following statement. The exchange of commodities by means of price leads to profit-making, to taking advantage and exploitation, in short, to some form of capitalism. If you do away with profits, you cannot have any price system, nor any system of wages or payment. That means that exchange must be according to value. But as value is uncertain or not ascertainable, exchange must consequently be free, without equal value. Uh, since such does not exist. In other words, labor and its products must be exchanged without price, without profit, freely according to necessity. This logically leads to ownership in common and to joint use, which is, which is a sensible, just, and equitable system and is known as communism. Berkman points out that there is a difference between value and price and there is no way by which value can be measured. Value is, er, value is subjective and unquantifiable. Value cannot be determined. The same thing may be worth a lot to one person while it is worth nothing or very little to another. Therefore, the real value of a thing cannot be ascertained, but the price is easily found out. Thus, any uh, thus, any system of remuneration in terms of wages or payment for services is subjective and arbitrary. It is impossible to determine the true value of a person's labor. So no system based upon payment for services could ever be equitable. Furthermore, modern production makes it impossible to distinguish the product of one person's labor from that of another. A single product can be the joint product of collective labor, and there is no possible objective criteria for determining how much of the product's final value came from which individual contributor. Uh, consequently, no system of remuner uh, consequently, no system of remuneration or payment could ever be completely rational. The communist anarchists concluded that a truly liberatory society uh, would have to abandon markets and money altogether and, re and restructure the economy on the basis of from each according to their ability to each according to their need. If we, are, if we are to do away with markets and money and restructure society so as to guarantee well-being to all members, it follows that we must eliminate private property. If a proprietor cannot profit or, or hire workers, then he is no proprietor. In the ABC of Anarchism, Berkman writes, um, Economically, the anarchist will permit no exclusive possession of the sources of life in order to preserve his opportunity of free access. Monopoly of land, private ownership of the, of the machinery of production, distribution, and communication can therefore not be tolerated under anarchy. Opportunity to use what everyone needs in order to live must be free to all. In a nutshell, the meaning of communist anarchism is this, the abolition of government, of coercive authority and all its agencies, and joint ownership, which means free and equal participation in the general work and welfare. Under communist anarchism, decisions would be made on the basis of consensus or direct democracy. The community would collectively own all industrial and commercial enterprises, and there would be a social contract wherein the members of the community, each also a participant in the governmental decision-making process, would agree to work insofar as they are able and uh, 
the community in turn would be bound to provide them with, ever, with everything they need for survival. But if the community is going to guarantee the provision of necessities uh, to the best of its abilities, then the community must uh, be in charge of production and distribution. Private property and industrial and uh, commercial enterprises must be abolished so that the community can take control and organize production and consumption in order to guarantee the provision of necessities to all of its members. When resources are low, the community might have to engage in rationing. When resources and products are in abundance, people would be able to take more or less freely what they desire, and the members of the community would live in luxury. I know that you are already having a knee-jerk reaction to this idea of rationing, but this isn't something peculiar to communism. Scarcity can sometimes happen even under capitalism. The only difference is that without rationing, you have rampant poverty, homelessness, and starvation, uh, because you allow the wealthy and well-off to hoard supplies while the masses suffer. Even in capitalistic societies, you will see a tendency to revert to more communistic arrangements like rationing when there are major crises. Rationing was necessary in England and in the United States during World War II. National dis er, natural disasters and ecological crises can also make rationing necessary at times. Additionally, it must be remembered that communist anarchism does not recommend rationing except in times of uh, scarcity. Berkman points out that rationing helps under er, Berkman points out that rationing happens under capitalism and under Marxist regimes as well. Under communist anarchism, rationing will be managed on principles of equality. The Bolsheviks rationed on the basis of party considerations, uh, giving police and soldiers more in order to strengthen their uh, political party by ensuring that the authorities were on their side. Uh, this is diametrically opposed to the way rationing would be done under communist anarchism. The community would be uh, directly democratic with the people rather than functionaries in control of all things, and rationing would be done in accordance to need. Uh, rationing is only needed under extreme conditions. Under normal conditions, everything will be freely given. Instead of private companies uh, producing for profit and selling their products at the highest price possible, organized labor will produce in order to meet the needs of the community, and the supplies will go to public storehouses, where people will go to get the things that they need. The communist anarchist society will have an economy based on equality and sharing. Buying and selling will be abolished. Trade and exchange will be abolished. Thus, money as a medium of exchange, having become obsolete, uh, will be abolished. Uh, communist anarchism, unlike Mar Marxism, does not advocate a centrally planned economy. Instead, it advocates radical decentralization. Autonomous communities will be governed locally through direct democracy. The people will make decisions in general assemblies or councils at the local level. And industry will be carried on entirely by organized labor. Under communist anarchism, scarcity would be less of a problem than under capitalism. Berkman observes that scarcity under capitalism is artificially created. Under capitalism, industrial and commercial enterprises are driven by the profit motive. It is in the interest of the companies to keep the price as high as possible, so corporations may conspire together in order to keep prices artificially high. The easiest way to ensure that prices stay high is to ensure that the product is in short supply. Most of the scarcity that we encounter in the modern world is artificial. Uh, big businesses and the capitalist class withhold, hoard, or destroy part of the supply in order to create artificial scarcity to drive up prices and increase their profits. Alternatively, capital and business may collude in order to intentionally produce less than is demanded by the market, uh, thereby ensuring artificial scarcity and high prices. 
Most communist anarchists, like the collectivists, arrived at the idea of anarcho-syndicalism. It is held by anarcho-syndicalists that the appropriate way to bring about the, the collectivist or communist anarchist revolution is through the organization of labor. The workers should be organized and they should actively seek to take over industry and kick the capitalists out. Labor unions ought not to be just for collective bargaining and seeking better wages and working conditions. Uh, the unions ought to be focused on edu educating the proletariat and undermining the capitalist system. The ultimate goal of the union uh, should be to put the working class in control of the means of production. The land, factories, machines, and such must be placed in the possession of the workers. The exploitative role of the capitalists must be eliminated altogether by remaking society in such a fashion that all necessary work is equally shared by all members of society. All, pe all people will be part of the working class, and all members of the working class will, shall, where, will share ownership of all land and enterprise. Anarcho-syndicalism emerged out of collectivist and communist anarchism, and this movement was responsible for the anarchist confederation in Spain during the Spanish Civil War. Uh, Murray Bookchin's libertarian municipalism and the democratic confederalism of his student Abdullah Ocalan, uh, both, uh, largely uh, both are largely based upon communist anarchism. Uh, however, Bookchin was also heavily influenced by libertarian Marxism. Uh, the Democratic Confederation of Northern Syria, also known as Rojava, is a uh, so far successful experiment in libertarian socialism based upon the ideas of Bookchin and Ojalan. Uh, the Democratic Confederalists in Syria have built a new society on the basis of libertarian socialism and radical feminism and they refer to their system of government as a non-state solution. 